Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a recipe that I came up with when I had extra croissants that we had purchased from Costco and they were going stale. So this is a perfect recipe for that. Let's get started. Whenever I get croissants from Costco, there's always a few that end up starting to go stale. We just don't go through them quickly enough. So that's why I came up with this recipe because I didn't want any to go to waste. Now it's important to note that if you don't have time to cook these up right away, you can always put them into a freezer bag and just pop them into the freezer until you're ready to make them. Then when you're ready to make them, you just pull them out of the freezer and let them thaw for a few minutes. I cut them horizontally and then I prepare the custard. For the custard, I start by cracking two eggs and then I put in one tablespoon of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of good vanilla extract. It's important that you use good vanilla extract and not the imitation stuff. Uh, there's a vast difference. So add that in and because ground cinnamon is so difficult to mix in to the custard, I just mix it right now before adding the milk. And then once it's all mixed, I will be adding about two cups of milk. Now I'm starting with a cup and a half and going from there. Usually I will do eight croissants and that is perfect for this amount of custard. This time around I only had four, but you can keep the remaining custard into the in the refrigerator for up to 48 hours if you have it very tightly sealed. But make sure you use it within that time period, otherwise it can create salmonella and that's really bad. I'm now using the biggest frying pan I have. I love this pan. It's 14 inches. It's huge. But it's perfect for a lot of the meals that I make. So for this one, I heat it up on medium high heat and then add four tablespoons of margarine. While the margarine is melting, I add one half of the croissant into the custard. Let it soak until you see that it's, it has absorbed some of the custard, but I don't let it sit in the custard for too long because I want it to keep its shape. I don't want it to fall apart. The length of time you keep the bread in the custard will depend on how stale the bread is. I then let some of the custard drip out of the bread so that it doesn't get too soggy and then I put it in the pan to fry up. Now, you'll repeat the process with the rest of the croissants. I like to do no more than four croissants at a time so that I don't overcrowd the pan and I let them fry until they get nicely browned on both sides. I keep the flame at about medium to medium high heat because I want it to cook on the outside to fry up on the outside, but I also want it to cook all the way through. So I want to make sure that I give it plenty of time to do that. Please stay till the end of the video where I show you my beautiful lavender and how I'm preserving it.
I then finish it off with some powdered sugar. My family loves the powdered sugar and the maple syrup. And here's a little tip for you. I have this little jar that I, I have no idea where I got it from. I think my mom might have given it to me. But I keep my powdered sugar in that and then I seal it up with some plastic wrap and then screw on the top and that way it protects the, the powdered sugar but then you have it for the next time you want to use it. If you have any leftover French toast, you can put it in a Ziploc bag, pop it in the refrigerator, and then heat it up in the toaster the next day. I'm using one of my recently thrifted Blue Willow plates, and this is a perfect opportunity to use one of your beautiful small pitchers. And of course, don't forget your ice cold glass of milk. Okay, so I'm going to take a bite. Mm, yum. This is so good because the outer part is just a little bit, it's got a tiny little bit of a crunch and, but mostly a little bit chewy and it's really creamy in the center. It's just so delicious. It really ch just takes French toast and elevates it to another level. It is so good. You've got to try it. Let me know what you think. When we first purchased this home, we planted three varieties of lavender. And this particular lavender, this, this particular plant decided to take over the entire space. And I can't even see my other two plants, but I'm just so happy that it, it's flourishing. I love bees. I really love them. They're so cute. I am so grateful for them and everything that they do for us. I'm also very allergic to them. So I, I've only been stung once and uh, that one time closed up my throat and it was a little bit difficult to breathe. I just let them fly around and I don't swat at them. I think that they can tell that I love them because they haven't stung me again. These are some bundles I cut and hung to dry two weeks ago.
I was initially intimidated by the process of drying flowers, but when I researched how to do it, I realized it's quite easy. Just take the flowers, arrange them into a bundle, tie them with some twine, hang them upside down, in, and hang them in a dry, cool place for about two weeks or so until they're dry. When the bundles are ready, take some clothespins and clip them to a hanger and you're done. If you like the video you saw, click on this one.